edition of the Coffee of Jojo show, the show where the platform is yours. We're live on KMTV in Monrovia, Liberia. My name is Josephine Koluva, and I know you guys are having fun this Thursday afternoon. Today, my guest is a very interesting person, someone that I just met in a very short time, but I can already feel the vibe. So when we come back from the break, I'm going to be introducing him. We'll be right back. I told you my guest is very interesting and someone that is here to teach me something that I have no idea of. Of course, that's why the platform is yours. We always say the platform that teaches, right? So the platform is always yours. It's the Cafe of Jojo show. So the, today my guest in studio is Adolphus T. Clark. He's the program manager, EPR, Ministry of Health, Republic of Liberia. Welcome to the Cafe of Jojo show. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, and. I you hope I didn't caught you yeah. off that. No, 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 it's okay. You got me now. Uh, right. I'm a bit... You are a bit No, but <laughs> I think it's okay. And it's a pleasure being on your platform. I look forward to fruitful conversation. Of course. I'm sure it's going to be quite fruitful because uh, it's a fruitful conversation, of course. So welcome. What's up? How's the Ministry of Health? Uh, thank God. The, the Ministry of Health is doing well. Uh, I know that um, sometimes people don't like to hear the answer, but... From a leadership perspective, mm -hmm. I don't see challenges, I see opportunities because when you have challenges, they, they are opportunities that you need to cultivate. Wow. So I wouldn't tell you that the ministry is all glooming. Mm -hmm. In the midst of those challenges, we see as opportunity and how can mm -hmm. we tap into those opportunities right. to give the kind of relief and support that the citizens so desire. Of course. So I as of now, you don't care about problem. You are more focused on the improvement, the progress that you're making. Yeah, I mean, I tell people, when you see problem, you see solutions. So right. from a positive angle, you go after the solution. Mm -hmm. The world will never be problem free. Mm -hmm. What is more important is how then can you see the solution with any problem? Okay. I'll tell you, right? Mm -hmm. Like I tell some of my students, you already have an A by sitting in the class. Okay. What is incumbent upon you is how to achieve the A. Just by sitting in a class, you already have an A. Yeah. You what didn't is, take the test, but you have what A. What is important is how do you sustain the A that you've got by your first day in class. Okay. And that is up to you. That's good. You know, so All right. it's the, 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 the sustenance of that A mm -hmm. will be dependent on hard work, diligence, mm -hmm. punctuality, and you just name every other thing. Wow. But there's an A sitting there for you. No. I mean, just every, work towards yeah, it. Every student, they are mental parts. I mean, no one wants to fail. Yeah. Uh, you just need to motivate yourself and go it's for it. So, there are challenges in life. Of I mean, course. we can never rule that <laughs> out. But we should look for the possibilities right. that are in those challenges and go after them. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, the show hasn't even started. He is already motivating me. This is going to be a good show. So, the reason why we are here today, the reason why you are here on the Coffee with Juju show is because... Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about what should be happening. We are here to promote uh, the vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, that's why he's here. So just tell us why you are here and what you can teach us today. Yeah, thank you. And so um, I'd like to go in history because it's important mm -hmm. in order for us to help our people to rediscover their motivation relative mm -hmm. to vaccination. Mm -hmm. It is important for people to understand the history of vaccination in Liberia, how it all started mm -hmm. as a country when we started vaccination, mm -hmm. and why people should trust vaccine or trust the Ministry of Health vaccination program mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the expanded program on immunization. Mm -hmm. So the, the story goes back as, as far as 1974. You agree with me that Liberia amongst the community of nations is a member of the World Health Organization. Okay. And so in 1974, WHO had written all member states okay. to establish what we call the expanded program on immunization within okay. its primary healthcare system. Mm -hmm. Liberia didn't do so until 1978. And you understand why we could not do so in 1974 because mm -hmm. the establishment of the program comes with infrastructure and available human resources. Okay. So because we never had 
those two active ingredients or element in place, mm -hmm. we needed time to first build the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. and needed time to also train people who will be delivering the services mm -hmm. out as well as the procurement of equipment that mm -hmm. will be used to deliver the services. So that took us approximately four years to have the EPR program established. Mm -hmm. And EPR, sorry, EPR stands for? Expanded Program on Immunization. Okay. So we just call the short say EPR, EPR because people are more accustomed with the acronym right. rather than the whole, the the whole, whole the program, whole, yeah. The whole meaning of the, the EPR. Mm -hmm. So when the program was launched in 1978, we were targeting six diseases. I mean, there were six diseases that we wanted to prevent in Liberia, and not just Liberia, but the world large. Mm -hmm. And those diseases were poliomyelitis, or what you call infantile paralysis, where you have the child being born crippled, mm -hmm. or the child is born in little undeveloped paralysis, and the child is crippled either mm -hmm. in the legs or the hand, depending on the, the, the presentation. We also have mm -hmm. measles, the measles disease. We have tuberculosis or TB for short, mm -hmm. and then we had three other diseases we call diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. Mm -hmm. Pertussis is what people refer to as whooping cough. Oh. Yeah. We put that hoop, yeah. and then blood comes out. Mm -hmm. And then so these were the six diseases that started the program, and the vaccine we had at the time to prevent these diseases were the oral polio vaccine for polymyelitis. Mm -hmm the measles containing vaccine, or what we call MCD for shot for measles, the BCG vaccine for tuberculosis, and then the DTP vaccine for diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. Since 1978, what has happened as a country? Yeah, because we need to set the stage or the mm -hmm. foundation. Of course. Then to get to where we are, so people tend to appreciate yeah. Yeah. what has happened relative to government mm -hmm. and the efforts we made as a country. Mm -hmm. So. In 2001, we introduced what we call the yellow fever vaccine. And I show some of us who, who are privileged or have the opportunity of traveling, you often tell them being asked at the airport or mm -hmm. put an entry for your yellow book. Of course. And so we said to ourselves, should we wait for people to travel before we protect them against yellow fever? Or at birth, you should be protected against yellow fever. Because when, you, when a child receives a dose of yellow fever, mm -hmm given the recent position paper, mm -hmm. that child is protected for life against yellow fever. Of course. So why do we want to wait for yellow book only when you're about, when to, you're travel? about to travel? Right. So we introduced the yellow fever vaccine within the immunization program in 2001. Mm -hmm. But we were not satisfied because what guides or gauges our decision-making process should mm -hmm. be the data that you generate. <laughs> I mean, decision without empirical evidence, I mean, it's just a witch our decision because mm -hmm. there should be a precipitator, there should be an enabler, there should be a driver that guides your decision. Mm -hmm. And so what we try to rely on is to ensure that we always look for a reference point. Of course. And we need our empirical evidence of data. So we look at our health data and realize that hepatitis B was becoming a concern in Liberia. We saw healthcare workers and mm -hmm. other frontline work of being exposed mm -hmm. to hepatitis B. And so we said, if we can do anything to protect the citizen of Liberia, mm -hmm. we are on the obligation to do so. And as per our menace program, mm -hmm. we are on the obligation to reduce the mobility and mortality of vaccine preventable diseases mm -hmm. in children between the ages of zero to 23 months, mm -hmm. girls nine years old, mm -hmm. and that of women of reproductive or childbearing age. Okay. So. You said the data is telling us something. I mean, we cannot ignore what the data is telling us. We need to intervene. So mm -hmm. in 2009, we transitioned from DTP formulation of vaccine to what we call PENTA. Mm -hmm. Now, the prefix PENTA means five. So when we say pentavalent vaccine, that means that vaccine contains five antigen that goes against five diseases. Mm -hmm. So the two diseases we added to the list after yellow fever mm -hmm. were hepatitis B, Hemophilus influenza type B. So you see, from six diseases, we now moved to nine between 1978 Eight. to 2009. Nine. We were still not satisfied because nine. we tried to do as much as we can to mm -hmm. ensure that the world remain a safer place and just not Liberia. So mm -hmm. joining other countries in that global efforts, a right. global fight, is extremely important. So mm -hmm. again, 
we look at our data and we saw that when you look at health the health stat and statistic for Liberia, mm -hmm. you see that when you want to discuss infant and under five mortality, mm -hmm. the number of infant or children less than five who die, you tend to look at what are they dying from. Are they dying from something that we have control over or are they dying from something that we can do nothing about? And so we realize around 2012, 2011, 2010, children were dying from pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Pneumonia. Pneumonia, right? Yeah. And so we say, but if there's a vaccine to prevent pneumonia, why not prevent pneumonia and wanting a child to come down with pneumonia where they have to rush him or her to the hospital and sometimes it's the decision between whether the child survives or the child is going to die depending on the, the severity of the disease. So mm -hmm. in 2000, 14 January 9th, mm -hmm. we introduced what we call the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. The what? Pneumococcal conjugate vaccine for prevention against pneumonia. pneumonia. Okay. So you see now we've, we've increased from 6 to 10. To because 10. Then we didn't stop there. Hey, we continuously review our health records and we needed to know exactly what's happening and what we can do within our peer view as a program and mm -hmm. what we just can do and we can only advocate mm -hmm. to ensure that the relevant program or units or division right. do their part. So in 2016, we also noticed that when you look at infant and under five mortality, mm -hmm. diarrhea accounted or was or ranked second as the second reason why a child Die in Liberia less than five. Diarrhea. Years. Diarrhea. Not malaria. No, malaria number one. Okay. So after malaria, you have diarrhea. Right. And then we say, hey, if people are dying from malaria, from from malaria, diarrhea, mm -hmm. and we can do something about diarrhea, why not intervene? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just fair enough yeah. where we can do our part, we play our part more positively. Mm -hmm. So, in 2016, to be precise, mm -hmm. April 22nd, we introduced what we call the rotavirus vaccine mm -hmm. to prevent diarrhea caused by rotaviruses. We didn't stop there. Mm -hmm. So you see, I'm giving you the sequence yeah. because then we come to the right. issue of um, COVID vaccination. Where of we course, are. it's important so, to set the so, so people understand that the vaccination process just didn't start now. Mm -hmm. We started as far back as 1978 and why it is important for them to trust the system and believe that the vaccine is safe. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, July 3rd, mm -hmm. we introduced another vaccine called the inactivated polio vaccine to prevent polio. Mm -hmm. So it's giving further boost to the already oral polio vaccine within the immunization program. Mm -hmm. And then 2019 of recent, because it's just a few years back, we introduced two new vaccines. We introduced the vaccine for measles, the second dose, mm -hmm. that was September 9, 2019. And then we introduced the vaccine for cervical cancer that we call the human papilloma virus vaccine. Now, if you're privileged to Google, mm -hmm. you see that when you look at cancer mortality globally and you try to zero in relative to the African continent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see that in Liberia from 2014 up to 2016-17, 18 day above, we had 29.7% of our women dying as a result of cervical cancer. And we said, hey, if we have vaccine to prevent cervical cancer, then why our sisters, our mothers, our nieces should die from the disease mm -hmm. that can be prevented? Mm -hmm. So that led to us applying for the vaccine and we had our vaccine introduced in 2019, right. November 25th. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping that by the close of uh, the next two years, mm -hmm. we will begin to see a downward trend in the number of hepatitis B cases mm -hmm. reported in Liberia. Mm -hmm. And that vaccine is administered to girls nine years that are in and out of school. So whether you're in school, whether you're out of school, once you're nine years old. From nine years old? Yeah, we stop at nine years. Okay. And stop or start? Stop. Okay. Stop. The reason why we stop at nine years is because people acquire or attract the disease through sexual contact. Oh, okay. And so we want to prevent a girl child before she starts sexual life, unless otherwise. Mm -hmm. Maybe rape or something. Okay, okay. Right. but we think that it's important mm -hmm. to have them protected before sexual life because mm -hmm. you can never know what their sexual preference, right. sexual preference in terms of their habits mm -hmm. would be like once they move into sexual life. So 
we thought that it's just important to wow. protect them. So that was in November 25th, 2019. And then quite recently, um, April 5th to the, to the 9th, we did a nationwide type of vaccination. Okay. And we were vaccinating children between the ages of 9 months to 14 years. Okay. We were targeting 1,901,130 persons in that category. Okay. We are now moving towards putting a vaccine into our routine program. Mm -hmm. So if you just see the trend, you see that we have made several efforts. From 1978 to, to now. Yes, so you see we have had several vaccines. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is to help people to rediscover the motivation of the vaccine. Because mm -hmm. if vaccines were safe then, mm -hmm. I show vaccines are still, still safe, safe now, now. Right. so people shouldn't express any apprehension okay. about the safety of the vaccine. And of so course. we think it is important for people to to trust in vaccination. I know that there are concerns relative to mm -hmm. to the COVID nineteen vaccine, and mm -hmm. I will be more than glad to discuss, to discuss your concerns. <laughs> of course, that's I mean, why we are here. I mean, that's why I we mean, are here. Like I always just say, people have got legitimate concerns, and it's, it's unfair if you want to discount. Yeah, or, ignore, or ignore their concerns. Mm -hmm. We should always listen to them mm -hmm. and provide them with the right information. And, so any and question is a good question? Yes, yeah, certainly. Every, any question, every question needs an answer. Certainly. I mean, it depends It depends on okay. what, what the definition of answer is. Okay. So yeah. we are live on Facebook as well as YouTube. So if you have any question concerning this very topic, that is the vaccination, the COVID-19 vaccine, that is uh, going on. It's, it's already started. It's, it's ongoing. If there's so, any so question I'm or any concern that you want him to answer, you can please let us know by just texting uh, your your question. Okay, so, so, so I'm coming in. So COVID. So we've just give you the history of immunization. I chose just yes. to give you a background. All started, the way from 1978, 1978, when we were not even born. Yes. So people understand that your mother had to make a decision for you, for you to be protected and you benefit to get now. you where you are today right so make that same decision for your child for your child your children so that they too can make similar decision for their unborn child okay. children i mean it's just setting the stage of course and encouraging our listening audience okay. our mothers our fathers that was really good sisters. i learned a lot of yeah. different things yeah. i didn't know everything that you explained okay. so thank you so much yeah. for that Thank you. So I think the, 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 the reason why this very vaccination or COVID-19 is becoming, uh, COVID-19 vaccination is becoming like a joke to a lot of people, including very close people of mine that I know. I think the reason uh, that is that way is because of um, the doubt that Liberian people had. In the beginning of uh, COVID, when COVID started last year, a lot of people were afraid, were taking all the unnecessary precautions, but then people don't believe. Don't you think that's why it's becoming a problem? Because vaccination or taking vaccine hasn't been a problem. I, I remember growing up, my mom used to say, today you're going to school, you have to stay here and wait for your vaccination. I mean, the people are going to be going around in the community. But when it comes to COVID-19, people are not taking it as serious as they've been taking the other things, or uh, the other vaccine. Why do you think it's that way? So I, would, I wouldn't use the phrase or the expression that they're not taking it serious. I would think that people have got some concerns and like i said we should respect their concerns of I mean, course. Mm -hmm. and listen to them hear what they have on their minds mm -hmm. or on their chest mm -hmm. and see if we can provide the right answer because okay. the dispensation we are in you cannot rule out missing this information mm -hmm. you cannot rule out the power of social media platform mm -hmm. relative to spewing or spreading mm -hmm. missing this information mm -hmm. so it's always just fair enough to hear them out and provide them with the facts of course to, to guide their decision making power because uh, is the their law, choice is the, it is the it law, by choice the public health law of Liberia revised section 10 or chapter 10 of that law deals with immunization okay and there is no way in the law that we say people should be coerced or forced to take vaccine and okay. so that's why we continue to provide the facts okay. and you make a determination okay. because the law is not there to say you should fool someone mm -hmm. and i think we don't want to reach that stage mm -hmm. i think people have got the right to their concerns mm -hmm. what we can do is to always give them the right information right. to guide the decision making process and once that that is done i think 
I'm very optimistic that mm -hmm. people will make the decision to get vaccinated. Of course. Um, the reason why I say people are not taking it serious, that's it. That's the simplest way I can go. I mean, do you think they are giving you the maximum attention or the maximum uh, acceptance when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine? Well, I, I mean, I go to church and so I subscribe to the thing they call faith. <laughs> You have the fit. I don't know about you, but... but, but you don't know but, about me in terms but, of... But your faith, but I subscribe, <laughs> I subscribe to what they call faith. Okay. The question is, am I happy at the weight and pace at which the vaccination drive is going? Mm -hmm. I can only say I'm very optimistic that the story will change. I mean, it will change. The story will change. Okay. Now, the reason why I say the story will change is because I'm looking at the numbers. Mm -hmm. okay. And the numbers are beginning to take a positive trajectory. Mm -hmm. It's taking a positive trend upwards. Mm -hmm. And so what is included upon us is to sustain that momentum, okay. to sustain that trend. And if we are able to do so, mm -hmm. we're certainly reach our goal. That's my optimism. Okay. I mean, I may not be correct. I mean, you, you, I mean, I mean you are, I, the faith is there. I have that. I have the optimism and always like to be more positive. I know that they are negative, but mm -hmm. I always tend to look for the positive. And besides, and, the and numbers don't to, lie. And try to actualize it. So mm -hmm. from a general context, uh, as at today, as at yesterday, mm -hmm. we haven't keyed in all of the, the data mm -hmm. yet. But just just on average, what I've seen from the data team, mm -hmm. we've been able to reach 10,000 person. Our goal is to reach 48,000 persons. So we are hoping over the next 10 days before May 9th, we hope that we can reach the balance number we are targeting. Okay, so we... So, we... so I'm optimistic. Mm -hmm. We are all out there. We are all encouraging mm -hmm. our, our listening audience mm -hmm. to help us in this fight. I think um, it is important mm -hmm. to protect everyone as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And so we should be all out there we should encourage people mm -hmm. we should listen to their concerns mm -hmm. and try to provide the right answer we mm -hmm. should not get angry we mm -hmm. should not then discount or ignore their concerns right. i think they have their rights to, uh, and, to and, ask and, questions and just say enough for mm -hmm. us to always be willing i to mean address yeah those, those concerns. of course uh, the news i mean the the, the good news this is a good news and it should be spreading. That's why we have platforms uh, such as the Coffee of Jojo Show. We spread the right news. All right. So before we get into what people are thinking negatively or the, 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 I mean, what we hear in the streets and on the Internet and all that, I just want to ask you a few questions. And um, that is number one. Can after taking the vaccine, right, when you are vaccinated, is it possible that you can still spread uh, the COVID-19? So let me unpack that, right? Let mm -hmm. me unpack that first day and tell you three things that vaccines, mm -hmm. irrespective of which vaccine you are taking, vaccines will do three things for you. Okay. One of them would be to prevent and or reduce the severity of the disease. Mm -hmm. The second thing it does is that it reduces hospitalization okay because you know if you don't have a disease in the face and severe state mm -hmm. there's no need you go to hospital mm -hmm. i've not seen somebody who go to hospital just for headache mm -hmm. or fever right mm -hmm. unless the situation is it's worse, very worse yeah. especially where here have, where you have conversion and all that thing coming in before you see people being rushed to hospital mm -hmm. but for minor fever uh, oftentimes see people self-medicate take paracetamol yeah. or any antipyretic or and just sick and then they just go they yeah. just go their way mm -hmm. so that's the second thing it does it reduces hospitalization and so then our nurses healthcare workers peers doctors you just name it mm -hmm. are not on an immense pressure to care because then hospitals will not be seen as being overcrowded or mm -hmm. being overwhelmed mm -hmm. the other thing it does is that it reduces death so if you're following the news, let me just step outside a bit. Mm -hmm. If you're following the news, you, you, you will see that as I said yesterday, the U.S. death rate is taking a downward trend. Okay. This is also following the news relative okay. to COVID. Mm -hmm. You see that the U.S. numbers now are declining relative to death, hospitalization. Where we still seeing growing concerns happen to be India, where we see their numbers shooting up and we understand that they had enabling moments mm -hmm. that may or might have precipitated those like mass gathering, mm -hmm. yeah, festive period, a couple of things. And that so is in India. In India. And so we, right. are, we are praying and 
hoping that they are able to that, that they will be able to bend to bend the curve mm -hmm. anytime soon because mm -hmm. they were also on a positive trend mm -hmm. until they had their, their second wave. So again, you see now why U.S. curve is sticking, why U.S. curve is sticking a downward trend India because they started the vaccination, right? Okay. So it tells you the vaccine work, and these things that I just listed the three things are the things the vaccine will do. However, now if you took your two doses of COVID vaccine, depending mm -hmm. on whatever form, except Johnson Johnson, where you need one dose. Okay, it's two doses. It's two doses. Okay. So I will come to talk to them about the vaccine we have here. So there are mm -hmm. there are there are many vaccines now, Kennedy vaccines being used. So if you're taking AstraZeneca, or Pfizer, or Moderna. Mm -hmm. You're entitled to, to two doses. If you were taking Johnson & Johnson, then you would take, uh, you take one dose. If you were taking Sandovac or Sandofarm, they, mm -hmm. they have a one dose schedule. They have a two dose schedule with 21 days apart there, but it depends. But the cool thing is that out of this vaccine, we do the three things that I just listed. And that is the most important thing for people to understand. It reduces death. Hospitalization, hospitalization and it will prevent and or reduce the severity of the disease okay. so in other words i mean you may be vaccinated mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and you chose not to wear masks and you feel that oh yes i'm vaccinated mm -hmm. and ignore the measures mm -hmm. because our caution and global caution is that even if you are vaccinated mm -hmm. continue to practice all of the ipc measures mm -hmm. continue to wear your masks continue to wash your hands continue to social distance mm -hmm. before the guardians was six meters mm -hmm. now it has been reduced to three meters so we expect oh, people to, to do all of these things mm -hmm. but in the interim sometimes where enthusiasm steps in and you say oh i've been in taking a vaccine and you just ignore where it might mm -hmm. there's a possibility you may contract the disease you but mean after being va then, vaccinated yes there's a possibility okay however mm -hmm. if you contract the disease the way the disease will have Treat you if you are not vaccinated would be different okay. because we have protection. It wouldn't treat you the way that it would treat as somebody who, who is not protected. That's the good news, mm -hmm. and that will lead to you not going to hospital. Okay. You could be home and recover over a short, okay. short stint or short period of time, mm -hmm. and that may not lead to death. And that is why we are encouraging people to get vaccinated. It's important to get vaccinated. Uh, so, are there any side effects? Oh yeah, I mean. The last time I checked when I was staying at medical school, I don't know of any medication that, is, that doesn't have side effect. I stand to be corrected. I don't know of any medication. Now, you know, and that's why I throw out of people, right? Mm -hmm. There are people who take paracetamol. Okay. Or what you call acetaminophenol, depending on which country you find yourself in. If you're in America, they call it acetaminophenol. And then when they is that how they call it paracetamol in the United States? Yeah, yeah. How do you call it again? Acetaminophenol. Okay. But when they, when, when, they, when they add, when they modify the nucleus of that, mm -hmm. then they call it Tylenol. Okay. Then Tylenol becomes the trade name. Acetaminophenol becomes the generic name. Okay. I, mean, I mean, that would be a different classroom. Yeah, that would be we'll, somewhere we'll, else. We'll, <laughs> Because I'm getting confused, okay. Yeah, when we started to, to mm -hmm. discuss drugs, right? Right, right. So when you look up, I mean, you can Google for yourself and don't take my word for it. Mm -hmm. When you look up, it, the simplest paracetamol is when we have, because you know paracetamol mm -hmm. fought in two classes. Mm -hmm. Paracetamol is viewed as an antipyretic. Mm -hmm. By that, what I mean is that it's viewed as a drug that goes against fever because anti means against Paresia means fever. So if it's antipyretic, it goes against fever. Against fever. So mm -hmm. paracetamol also is an analgesic. It goes against agesia. It mm -hmm. goes against pain. Okay. So the fact that it is, it is an analgesic, mm -hmm. it goes against pain. So when you're having pain, for instance, you take paracetamol mm -hmm. or you take ibuprofen or ibuprofen, whatever medication, right? right? Mm -hmm. But if you, if you ever have time to read on those medications, you see they have less of side effects. But they do have effects. They side have effects. Lists. I mean, a list of many them. of them side effect. So take for instance, you can Google for yourself and see paracetamol. Okay. You see, it, have, it makes you drowsy, make you feel tired. Mm -hmm. You have this issue of tightness in the chest, mm -hmm. difficulty in breathing. All of these small small things are there. 
Okay. But yet people don't talk about them. And yeah. everybody do over the counter prescription to get paracetamol. Yeah. They even buy from the street peddlers paracetamol. Yeah. And we keep it at home for months. Exactly. Right. And you know? Mm -hmm. But yet when it comes to the vaccine, they say, oh, the vaccine gets side effects. Yeah. But have you ever read on these drugs that you, that you, you take almost every day mm -hmm. or every time? They do have side effects, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But they don't last long. That's the good news. So yes, I mean, on April 1, when we officially launched the vaccine, mm -hmm. AstraZeneca in Liberia, our, our, one of those along with the Honorable Minister of Health mm -hmm. and other people that took the vaccine. I took my vaccine April 1, and I'm still, I'm still moving. I was about to ask that question. Have you oh, taken your vaccine? Oh, yes, I have proof. I'm not, just yeah, not. can you show us your proof, please? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's important because, you know, you know, in leadership, it's important to lead by example. And so if I'm encouraging people to take the vaccine. So you, 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 it's you just are a, given a certificate? Your vaccination card. Okay, vaccination card. Is it mean you're wallet? So it's that important. Just to show yeah, proof. Yeah, he's because, here. Yeah, he took his. Because so people understand Thank that. Thank you, in congratulations. Day, indeed, I'm being vaccinated. And I, will, I will challenge you, um, Madam Koloba, to also be vaccinated. That the next time I appear on your show, I will. will I mean, that's to, why we are here, right? You will that's, be able to, yeah. to show me your vaccination card. Uh, you know, you know. Um, that, that might be here. Positively impacted your decision. I'm already process. impacted. I know. Just for the fact that I mean, we are explaining, we're talking, what we are talking. I'm learning a lot of things, and I know people that are watching on YouTube and on Facebook. They are also learning a lot of things. Um, you know, I'll be right here. Yeah. Sometimes we gotta break it down to the place where the people will understand what we're trying to say. Yes, yeah, sure, please. Uh, I'm you understand? Willing to do that. I better to break it down. You ready to break it down with me? Yes, please. Uh, okay. I mean. There were many attracts, but you know, I've been on Palava Hot on Equalize Radio. Okay. Just with Say What I Say. So you used to the breaking I, it down? I will try as much as possible. Please try as, as much as possible. Okay. So, they say, if you're what the people talking about, right? Eh? Even though paracetamol and aspirin and all these other different drugs, they have side effects. But when it comes to COVID 19 vaccine, people are so concerned. Mm. Why do you think so? And what are some of the side effects that you can just like call? You know, you go with your medical terms. I'm really enjoying it. Like you can just show that. Oh, you just get more headache, but go. You know? Can yeah, you just sure. tell us a little bit? So sure. let me say in the most simplest way to my mother's, father's, brother's, sister, yes, caregiver, parent, listening audience. Mm -hmm. So we say when you take the vaccine, we're trying to be more, mm -hmm. most simple as possible. Is that when you take the vaccine, mm -hmm. your skin will get hot. Let me put it as simple, right? Your skin will get hot more. Your skin will, your skin will get hot. Mm -hmm. What that means is that you are running temperature mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. above 37 degrees. Sometimes it, should be, it could be 37.8 mm -hmm. or more than that. Okay. So you, you have your skin getting hot, you mm -hmm. are running temp. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. All you need to do, if you have your paracetamol, the medicine you can take for fever, just go and take it. We're in two, one to two hours, mm -hmm. everything will stop. You feel normal again, and mm -hmm. you go about your normal business. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. Some people, when they have it, mm -hmm. their hair can be hurting. When your head hurting, mm -hmm. just take your paracetamol or your ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. The head will stop. Mm? It's not even hard. These are things that right. happen, right? Mm -hmm. Some people, in them when they take it, they can just feel tired. You know that there are certain medications they tell you when you take it. Don't draft, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They got certain call of syrup, but yeah. depending on the medication, they say when you take a call of syrup, don't draft because it will make, small, you, right? make you drowsy, it right. make you sleepy, right? Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that will happen. The effect will happen differently depending on your body, mm -hmm. your body system, right? Mm -hmm. And some of us, yeah, we feel drowsy. Like for me, when I took it, I just had slight fever for less than 45 minutes. Oh, is that quick? It was gone because I just took one paracetamol mm -hmm. and we're gone. And when you're having this side effect, mm -hmm. what it means is that it's good because then we see the vaccine working. Mm -hmm. The vaccine working because yes. when this side effect comes, that, that means, means the medicine your body, inside your you. body is fighting, your body is building immunity okay. protection against that. Okay. But when you take it when nothing happens, mm -hmm. then you come out to us and tell. Because by right, mm -hmm. when your body recognizes that foreign thing inside, your body will fight against it. To be able to control mm -hmm. it. And in that process mm -hmm. of fighting, different different things can, can happen. Some yes. of us will have fever, some of us will have a headache, mm -hmm. some of us will feel their warm vomit, mm -hmm. some of us will feel tired, dizzy, mm -hmm. some of us, our skin will itch. Mm -hmm. But these things can happen with any other medication. So it's not just unique to the vaccine. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is just take this medication. But if for any reason mm -hmm. you think your fever is stuck, just go to the nearest health facility that you took okay. the vaccine to. Yes. Then the doctor people then they will look at you. But beyond that, what we're seeing in mm -hmm. general, people 
need not to go to the hospital. Once you have a paracetamol, you take it. You just sleep. It will start, and rest. Then nothing will happen. Okay. Yeah. And that brings me to my next question. Yes, please. Uh, you you said you've been uh, doing the vaccination already. You've got 10,000 librarians, right? You've given vaccine to 10,000 librarian people, right? Yes, please. Okay. So, uh, has it been any day where someone came back and be like, ah, I don't understand it myself. I mean, how has it been for you as, uh, as a health a worker or health practitioner or whatever? You people get people coming back at you. Is there a place where you open to have people coming to talk about what happened after the vaccine? Oh, yeah. There is something called safety monitoring. Okay. We have a whole system that, you know, I will go back a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. You know, for those of us who are um, into public health, mm -hmm. uh, who are studying public health, mm -hmm. there is something we call surveillance, right? You heard, you heard the word surveillance? Yes. Surveillance, right? Yeah. So surveillance comes from the French, from the French word surveille. Okay. Surveille means to watch. Okay. So as much as we are administering the vaccine, we get people out there who are watching to see mm -hmm. if anything happening to people mm -hmm. and they report back to us, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, there are people who are friends say, oh, I took the vaccine, but I get fever. And the, just what I just said, mm -hmm. these are the things we tell them because sometimes people can panic, oh, mm -hmm. I took the vaccine, my skin was hot, so mm -hmm. I came back to the hospital. Mm -hmm. so just say, just take your paracetamol. And those people have gone back. Mm -hmm. And some of them moving very fine, mm -hmm. nothing. Everything going so well. Okay, yeah. that's good. So that's, that's, a good why, thing. that's why we're encouraging our people out there mm -hmm. to get the vaccine okay. and I know that people got fear but yeah let them be ashamed I mean that's why we are here to talk nothing, about it nothing nothing yeah so that, that, that's, that's, really. that's why we are on this platform to talk about it and I'm going to say something that might not be the best question to ask on this platform but in order to uh, have a and a total idea of what we're really discussing and how to convince other people because it's like you're telling me when I go in my own community, I'll start telling my own people. So every question that needs uh, answer that I feel like this answer, I need to ask you it. In the first place, I believe that I've been hearing about this COVID-19 and the vaccination and that we need to do this and we need to do that. But I believe that, um, not believe, I've heard many people say, why would I take COVID-19 vaccination when we did not even have COVID-19 in the country in the first place? What can you tell such people? Because that's why I hear, I, I mean, I'm always in the market horses. So people are always like, you don't take your COVID-19 test? No, why would I take COVID-19 test when there's, there, was, there was no covid in the first place, like you mentioned in the beginning of the program, you mentioned so many different uh, diseases that we needed to be uh, vaccinated to I me mean, against, and, you know, like such as malaria, typhoid, what, 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 all these different, different, different diseases. There were proofs, there were people, people know about that, but people believe that or people feel that, okay, uh, unlike, unlike malaria, we don't see, we didn't see COVID people, you know, COVID-19 treating people the way it treated people that have malaria or, or asthma or whatever, you understand? So what can you tell those kind of people that have that doubt that why should they even take the vaccine in the first place when there, there's no COVID in Liberia in the first place? You know, uh, that's a nice question. Thank you so much. What I would say to our listening audience, mm -hmm. viewers, and people who are following the program. Mm -hmm. COVID is real. I show we've seen other countries where COVID had mm -hmm. hit heavily, where COVID brought to their knees. Mm -hmm. And again, as somebody in the field of public health, we often say that disease has no boundary. Okay. So the fact that we are going back and forth, mm -hmm. that tells you that the disease will enter your country once you have your borders open because it has no boundary. People traveling, mm -hmm. they could contract this and that. But just to go straight to the problem, right. COVID is real. Mm -hmm. We've had many cases, over 2,000 cases mm -hmm. of again, corona, corona and virus disease in Liberia. 2,000 cases. Over 2,000. Over 2,000 cases. And, 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 and I just want people to 2099 to be precise and we have a recovery of 1949 with 85 deaths i mean i just want people to to trust the system mm -hmm. you know we have no reason to mm -hmm. to give you miss of this information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you are precious in my opinion and the and the least we can do is to ill inform you mm -hmm. or ill advise you COVID is real we have cases of COVID. Mm -hmm. Good for us. 
golf course, we were able to be a little bit proactive to put in place a couple of safeguard measures mm -hmm. for which we are not seeing cases of COVID as we've seen in other countries. Mm -hmm. But no one should, should doubt or have a disbelief that we don't have, we don't have COVID. COVID just because like it didn't there. happen in your yeah. family. Just because you didn't have a relation coming down with COVID does not mean that somebody who have been affected mm -hmm. or lost someone should be uh, looked down at. Because when you say it's not yet, and a parent knows that some member of his or her family died for it, mm -hmm. they feel disrespected, yes. they feel insulted. Yeah. And so all we can tell, tell them is that it is here, mm -hmm. but thank God that we're able to put in place mm -hmm. the initial safeguard measures mm -hmm. for which we are not seeing the number of cases compared mm -hmm. to other countries, mm -hmm. and we should continue to trust and the we health have, system. We, we've had more recovery than deaths. Exactly. Thank you so much for that answer, because I know plenty of people answering it. Okay, so he said COVID is real, and it's in Liberia. 2019, right? The amount of people that have... 2099. 2,099 people was affected with the COVID-19. So far today, that's, that's what the record is. Today, that's the record. Y'all been doing some research, though, okay? So the, he's here telling us that COVID is real and it's important that you take your COVID vaccination. We're going to be taking a very short break. When we come back, it's more with Mr. Adolphus T. Clark. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Sorry. Behind the scenes is always the best. All right. So thank you so much for joining us again. If you are just joining us, this is the Coffee with Jojo show. The show where the platform is yours. And we live on KMTV in Monrovia, Liberia. You can also catch on, uh, on YouTube. We are live also on YouTube. So uh, before the break, we were talking about the importance of taking COVID-19 vaccine. And he was telling me that, of course, COVID is in Liberia. It has been here all along. You know, but glory be to God, they were able to control it to a certain extent. But there are people and family around the country that are actually crying from this COVID because they lost most of their, I mean, some of their family members. And we should take it very seriously. So coming back to you, uh, someone was asking online, his name is Don Daddy. Don Daddy is saying, what is the most severity of the side effect that has been reported thus far? That's, in Liberia? Yes, in Liberia. So, I mean, just running through the numbers, mm -hmm. most people have um, spoken of fever and headache. Fever I mean, and headache. If you want to look at the number and, and, and quantify them, mm -hmm. then you look at fever and headache being the most reported incident okay. so far based on the, the preliminary data that we have. Okay, just fever and headache, yeah. which is minor. Minor thing, that's, which is, so which we, is, that's what we're encouraging people. Yeah. I mean, I mean we continue to, to pray that the uh, we don't get any worse situation, mm -hmm. but so far what we've seen is just the normal, and mm -hmm. that's why we're encouraging people out there yeah. to get vaccinated. I mean, it's I took my vaccine since April 1, and mm -hmm. you see me, I'll be taking my second dose on June 1, mm -hmm. along with the Honorable Minister and other people, and I'm good to go, though. Okay, there's a question yes, please, ask. that I need to ask. Yeah. On behalf of the Liberian people, but I'll I'll make that question the last. So let me so before I, I piss you off. No, 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 that <laughs> I'm gonna get that to the last. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Like I said, I mean, I can shoot. I don't. Please, I don't discount anyone concern. Okay. Yes. So people want to know because you are the program manager. Yes, please. EPI. Yes, please. Ministry of Health, Republic yes. of Liberia. Yes, please. People want to know, has the president? of the nation taking the vaccine oh that's that's a very brief and, and, and brilliant question right okay. and, and let me tell you how i put it to begin with right mm -hmm. i made a conscious decision on april 1 to take the vaccine okay not because the minister of health was taking the vaccine mm -hmm. 
I made a, con a conscious decision to mm -hmm. take the vaccine because I know that vaccine will do the three things that are listed. Yes. And on that basis, I took the vaccine. Right. I know the Honorable Minister of Health has been in contact with His Excellency, the President, Dr. Weir, mm -hmm. that has um, had a very tight schedule. You know mm -hmm. that His Excellency, the President, mm -hmm. has been on county tour. Okay. You know that he's just, yeah, yeah, he yeah, just yeah. came back. And we have to respect that because this was a tour that mm -hmm. was planned for. Mm -hmm. But I know the Honorable Minister of Health is, 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 is working closely with the executive mm -hmm. to ensure that once everything is right, mm -hmm. it will be open. But the President, like we said today, had information, having listened to the Deputy Information Minister, mm -hmm. the President has been engaged, he's been busy. Okay. But the message we send out to all Liberians is that mm -hmm. don't take the vaccine because you saw someone, someone taking it. Take the vaccine because you know that is going to prevent you yes. from coming down with COVID right. or reduce the severity of COVID if you came down with it, mm -hmm. reduces hospital hospitalization mm -hmm. and then reduces the risk of dying. Yes. Once you are able to do these things, you should have no problem. I, and mean, I think that should be the the driving force mm -hmm. or drivers behind mm -hmm. your decision why you get vaccinated. Yeah. And not because of people. I not mean, because you of should anyone. make a conscious decision. Yes. And so that's why we're here today giving you the facts. That's why today you are not coerced mm -hmm. or you're not being forced no, to take the vaccine. Not at all. So don't see somebody. I mean, you should not make decision because it's, a, it's just like yes. it's just like when I was in on graduate. You see somebody going to do accounting because their brother is doing accounting. Yeah, then you, you, you go yeah, do it. And then you go. You got to keep changing college from one college. Right. To one. So <laughs> people should make decision because they have all of the facts. And, and I mm -hmm. mean, I just encourage them out there to mm -hmm. to to see that as as the reason why they and should forget about who took it and who's going to take it and who I cares. Mean, they, should, they should trust their trust the information being provided. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm optimistic the Honorable Minister of Health is working very hard mm -hmm. with the executive to, to do the formal modalities. Mm -hmm. We know that the president has been engaged and we have to respect that. Of and, so, and so the work has been done. And once everything is said, it's people will be duly, will be duly notified. Yeah. Well, you should not say because John Brown. John Brown, okay. I, the, want, I mean, I want to take it no, you that. can. Okay. So um, my next question, it will soon be going out. Uh, we, we're almost out of time. So just to rush it out. Um, what is your target? Because I know you have a target around the world that the American pre the vice president the other day, she was rejoicing on some number that she targeted and they achieved that. I think they went beyond their targeted number. So what is your target in, you know, how long was the space of, of time? So I will answer the question in parts, right? Mm -hmm. So between 9 to 2022, we hope to achieve herd immunity. And so we hope by that time we mm -hmm. will be able to vaccinate 60% of our population, 60% of them. 2022. Between now and 2022. Because mm -hmm. vaccine availability globally is an issue. You know okay. that there are concerns about the production rate is mm -hmm. moving at a very low pace. Okay. And so we can see within three months of this, that. Mm -hmm. But what we are targeting, given the doses that we have in country, the mm -hmm. 96,000 doses that we have in country, mm -hmm. we are hoping that between now and May 8, mm -hmm. we will be able to vaccinate for the 8,000 persons. For the 8,000. The reason why we're talking, we are targeting for the 8,000 is because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. each person is entitled to two doses. Okay. So when you receive your first dose, mm -hmm. you must receive your second dose. Mm -hmm. And we have 96. So if you, if you divide 96 by 2, mm -hmm. it means 48,000. So mm -hmm. we want to reach that for the 8,000 mark. And we are about 10,000. And like I say, I'm very optimistic over the next 10 days, mm -hmm. we will be able to reach that. Okay. I mean, I All right. to so, that. for example, I want to take the vaccine, you know, just because uh, just before we leave, uh, I want to take the vaccine. My family, I'm going to convince my family, my yes, friends, please. my fans, my followers. Yeah. Where can we take the vaccination? How easy is, is it? Uh, so, so I will answer you and give you um, save a plot as well. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is that we have many sites now mm -hmm. in I will list all of the areas. Okay. So in Mosorado, we have Redemption Hospital. Mm -hmm. We have GFK Hospital. Mm -hmm. We have St. Joseph Catholic. Okay. We have SOS. Okay. We have JDJ. We have Jamade. We have EAWA. EAWA Hospital. Then at the UN building, mm -hmm. we have the UN Clinic. Okay. In Magibi, we have the Fulton Military Hospital, mm -hmm. and then we have the CH Running, the CH Running 
health facility. Okay, that's in Magibi. In Magibi, Kapata. Okay. All right. Now we are having ongoing conversation mm -hmm. to begin vaccination at Dusa Hospital on May 3rd. Okay. So Dusa Hospital in Firestone mm -hmm. will be used as another vaccination site mm -hmm. in Magibi. In Grand Bassa County, mm -hmm. we are using the Liberian Government Hospital okay. and that of the Asila Mittal Hospital mm -hmm. in in Grand Basso. Mm -hmm. In Nima, for now, we are using the Yekifa Hospital mm -hmm. and we will soon be commencing at the GW Halle in San Nicole okay. and we'll gradually roll out to, to Tapeta because we have plans on the way to ensure that Everyone. all of these sites, they are, they yeah. are brought on board. Mm -hmm. And in Bangabong County, we are working to have Phoebe and CB Doma. Okay. Void of those sites, we also have market sites because mm -hmm. we know our models our yes. partners will be at marketplaces so we are in 20 markets at this point in time we're in 20 markets what in and you? out of Morovia in Morovia 20 markets okay. so what are you in Raleigh go back shop Jacob you're, you're, in, you're in Raleigh town Oro, well, yeah, we have a team at Raleigh town okay we have a team uh, in Jokwa town okay. we have a team at Watasa, Clara town Dwala Gardner's view so we, so we have 20 market sites mm -hmm. that we are using just so we are able to bring the vaccination service mm -hmm. as close as to the people mm -hmm. given their their basic schedule mm -hmm. but more to more to that if we have an institution calling us and you have a minimum of 20 persons mm -hmm. a minimum of 20 a minimum. we can have the mobile vaccination team okay. reaching out to you to vaccinate you oh that's good yeah that's so good okay the thank you so 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 much wait 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 he's not busy like can you imagine he's on tv he's trying to leave it <laughs> i know you're very busy thank you so much for the hard work and thank you so so much uh do you have anything you want to say that i ask you is there a word like just a word like a line of or uh, who you want to say thanks to or whatever you want to do just conclude for us i'm just grateful to the liberian people okay. i think they've been very fantastic okay. most especially our vaccination team mm -hmm. our mobilizers and every other person that have shown up for the vaccine okay i mean we are forever grateful for your time your support mm -hmm. and together we can succeed as a country mm -hmm. and as a nation that's right yeah. all right 40 uh 38 000 more to go because we have 10 000 already right yeah. the first target is 48 000 and we have 10 000 so we have for uh, 38 more to go thank you so much guys for watching thank you for my facebook uh, viewers thank you for my um, um youtube viewers thank you so much guys for uh, guys for tuning in sorry i have to keep doing what i'm doing because it's distracting me thank you so much please go and take your vaccine i'm going to take my Mind. to be honest i have to do this for my family for my children my mom did it for me so i have to do it for my kids okay a very big shout out to my son joshua today is his birthday i am so excited thank you so 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 much for being my son mm -hmm. even though you gave me trouble but thank god that today you are plus one all right so i'm so 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 uh, grateful here. so until we see next week same time a very big shout out to you godwin i know you are watching a very big shout out to you josephus you are watching as well thank you guys so much for joining no, no, me until okay, we see yeah, next week same time same station our, our, yeah, my name remains Josephine Koluba, Jojo Fushet. Bye. Okay.